going to review the Milwaukee PH55, or in this case, the Martini PH55. So we're going to uh, use this in a real world, real world example. You'll see it as I'm mashing uh, a Janet's Brown Ale, and I'm going to show you how to calibrate it. So let's go out to uh, my most recent brew day. Hey! I'm in my garage, I'm brewing, I'm right next to my mash tun. I'm going to use my Milwaukee PH55, although this says Martini uh, PH55, the packaging said Milwaukee, so I'm going to assume that that means that they are uh, interchangeable, like the same thing. It came with a cap here, uh, and I put it in a cup filled with buffer solution. Okay, you can buy that. Uh, at any of the homebrew shops. You could fill up the cap with buffer solution and then place this right in there and leave it in there. Um, I prefer, just so that I can see it, to keep it out. So it has a replaceable electrode. So this part right here, but you want to keep it in the buffer solution so that it stays wet when not in use. You don't want to let it dry out and you don't want to put it in something like distilled water. You want it in the buffer solution here. So we're going to take a pH reading off of the mash. You can hear in the background my burner going to uh, get some uh, addition water in there. As I'm going to stir up the mash, I'm going to take a small sample, I have everything prepared here, a small sample in one of my many tasting glasses. Okay, this one from the Buffalo Museum of Science and Beerology. I'm going to put it into a small little ice bath. This is from John and Caitlin's wedding. It says, let love brew. Okay, and I'm going to uh, get some wort in there. Put it in here, cool it down to about 70 degrees, about room temperature. Then I'm gonna throw in my uh, pH meter and turn it on and check out our pH on this match. Looking for about 5.2, 5.4. Uh, and we're up to 5.6, making a brown ale. somebody come over to a party say what do you have to drink and they go I only drink make ultra you know who you are so I took a walk and got make ultra and a 30 pack of blue light don't hate Giving it a stir, it's down to 76. Now this uh, Milwaukee PH55 says it has automatic temp correction, and it will read the temperature and then adjust its pH based on that. So 75, I'm gonna call that close enough. Just so that we can see it, we'll take out our, our little sample here. Okay, we gave it a stir. We're going to put our pH meter in there and turn it on. All right, it's correcting the based on the temperature. I don't know if you can see that. There we go. So it's correcting based on the temperature. Looks like I'm up at about 5.5. If I wanted to bring that down, I have the things necessary to bring it down. I'm happy with a 5.5 on a brownie. Now we get to taste that. Ah, it's horrible! 
No, it's actually it's pretty good. Ooh, it's chewy. So welcome back inside. We're going to calibrate the meter here. So uh, what we're looking for is, is two buffer solutions that you want to get at your local homebrew store. You want a 4.01 and a 7.01. And you want these at room temperature. So right now I have two room temperature glasses. I have a Buffalo Brewers Festival and a Beerology glass. And I have opened the 7.01 that is going to be a, a neutral solution putting it here in the Buffalo Brewers Association, um, the Buffalo Brewers Festival, and the 4.01, the acidic uh, solution, storing here in the Beerology glass. So, we want to take our pH meter and hold down the calibration button. It says CAL. We want to hold that down, okay? until it says uh, 7.1, or until it says CAL, C-A-L, let go, and then it says 7.01, record. I'm sorry that you can't see that. As soon as it says OK, we're going to move it to the 4.01 solution. You want to move it as quickly as possible. It's saying record, R-E-C, 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 wait for it to say OK. CAL is ready, CAL is ready for now. OK moving it quickly to the 4.1, 4.01 solution, okay, there we are, it's saying use, saying calibrate, Ooh, and it gave me an error, which means that this could be the wrong solution, uh, so Reasons it could give you an error, W-R-N-G. It says wrong, as in this is the wrong solution. Uh, it is the 4.01 buffer solution, and it is at room temperature. So, what could be wrong? We could have a bad um, electrode on here. Or, that can't possibly be true. Or... I have 4.01 buffer solution that expired in July of 2011. So almost six years ago. Oh, that has to be a seven. It's not, it's an 11. Look at that. Holy cow, the expiration date on that thing is insane. So wow on the expiration date, right? Like six years passed. The other pouch is fine. It doesn't expire until 2018. And the local homebrew supply uh, stores, I, I can see you thinking like, I didn't sell them that. Who sold them that? No, I, I went to a wine store for that one, a wine making store. Um, but they still had it. The 7.01 solution um, expired in 2018. I mean, it still tastes good. Uh, and the 4.01 expired in uh, 2011. Yeah, and that's obviously bad. That's obviously uh, gone bad. It wasn't a very good year for pH solution, apparently. So I guess to put a review on this here, the pH 55, the Milwaukee or the Martini Instruments, uh, pH 55. If I were going to uh, buy one again, I might go for a different one in about the same price range, uh, the 50 to uh, 70 dollar price range, just because this one only gave me about six to eight months before it gave me that wrong on the calibration, and that is storing it in storage solution, not just in tap water. Um, although they say you can store it in tap water, I'm, I'm using the storage solution and I've calibrated it a couple of times, but this last time, even with brand new fresh pH calibration solution from Niagara Tradition, I was able to uh, not get it to calibrate. I was not able to get it to calibrate. However, if you're buying pH solution, go up to Niagara Tradition. Don't, don't go to the place I went to first, because uh, apparently their, their 4.01 solution is old. Even so, I was able to get a reading of 4.0 from the 4.01 solution uh, after a failed calibration. So as long as this thing is going to continue to read accurately, I'm going to continue to use it. 
Once it starts to drift a little in either direction, then either I'll replace the electrode, because it does have a replaceable electrode down here, right here, this whole part. I might replace it, or I might just get a new one. And if I get a new one, I will let you know how the new one works. And I'm probably going to be looking at about the same price range, the $50 to $70 price range. Uh, I will let you know that I did try, because why not? For, for $10, bucks, let us try it. I tried one of the uh, $10 pH meters that you're going to find online. There's a bunch of places you can find that. Wish.com. Uh, you can get yourself a, a $10, maybe even cheaper, like an $8 pH meter. And that one was wildly inaccurate. Um, this one... <laughs> This one got to a stable pH uh, that I trusted based on the calibration solution much quicker, and the other one didn't didn't calibrate um, at all. When I put it in the calibration solution, it wouldn't get anywhere near the pH that the solution said that it was. So this is the pH 55. Look for it at uh, at your homebrew shop. It's not a bad pH meter. I might look for something different. So thank you for watching. If you have any questions, scott at wnybrews.com. Okay, one more time. Don't drink your pH buffer solutions, all right? I, I refilled the glasses so I could do that. This is just water. All right, we'll see you at wnybrews.com.